There cannot be loss without beginning, or hardship without love. Those days of listening to the soil bring us back to the end. One more Ferris wheel in the faded summer fate. I see you there as a teenager, amid the pageantry I never could quite understand. What struck me most was your realness, pressed against a charging forward motion that we have absorbed and confused. I see you there as a pale daffodil in the grass, or a ghost I cannot ignore, and this is how my memory pierces me. Your lips as red as apples contain whole worlds, but possession never suited you. Anything that tried to hold you down too long disappeared into alcoholic vapors, or spent too long watching their own reflection on the silvery water. This was neither a cruel joke nor an attempt to bury intimacy, but a coded message with as many meanings as the sea has moods. Like all those who have casually hidden worlds inside them, I attempt to find my way back to you, over sparkling white dunes where footsteps are a form of silence. Sometimes I reach the clear-throated spring where the earth cries out with song. Your gestures are unlike those of anyone I have ever known, except on windy days you never mince your work. I feel as though I know you and will never know you, yet whatever happens I know I'll never forget you. My skin, blood, teeth, have been written with your ink. The dark wood of my lyre curved imperfectly to your hearing. When the astonishment is less intense, I often wonder whether walking in circles will resolve into the revelation you promise, or perhaps you promise nothing. After sniffing the sweet drug of some fantasy, I became dependent on certain expectations that may or may not bear truth. You can hardly blame me for wanting to love you or understand you. That's just the way we children play in the sand. Dotted about this tragic world are tokens of divine radiance. The way a mountain stream catches the morning light. Two lovers holding hands on a country path. The soft yellow of a primrose and the stark wood before the spring begins. Even with horror just around the corner, on the other side of a valley there's an abattoir, or beneath our feet one of the lovers accidentally steps on a snail. It is impossible to mistake the divine radiance that infuses this tragic world. Perhaps even the innermost circles of hell are not without their wild flowers or splashes of light. We belong not just to one dimension but to several dimensions simultaneously. Our fragile lives depend on the dead. What blossoms amid fear may yet reach towards a distant sun.